few minutes we are going to have a quick chat about uh, how to calculate the corrected potassium in AVG. Now it's a very important concept and I hope that you find this useful. If you like this video useful please uh, share with others and also please don't forget to subscribe. All right so over the next few minutes these are the few goals or aims we have. We will understand what is AVG uh, or a VVG or blood gas and um, in the blood gas, that why, why, what is uh, corrected potassium? Uh, there is some difference between corrected potassium and expected potassium. We need to have a very good concept about that. There is some formula in correcting the potassium and I'll, uh, I'll show you uh, that formula and you will find this really useful. Uh, of course, uh, the main aim or the main goal of this uh, talk is to know how to calculate the correct potassium. It's a very important concept and I hope that you can understand it. Uh, in the medical clinical practice, uh, obviously our main goal is to uh, manage the corrected potassium, right? So in some cases, the corrected potassium may be low. In that case, add on some potassium. In some cases, there may be increased potassium and we need to then give some treatment for that, right? So. Let me show you a patient at first. This is a patient I saw a couple of months ago. Um, it's a very unwell patient with a life-threatening metabolic acidosis, pH of 6.82. This is the time when the heart cannot cope and um, the patient can basically die. But also there are some uh, multiple other problems. Patient got severe lactic acidosis. Patient got life-threatening hyperkalemia. Sugar level is very high and the machine could not measure how the glucose was. Also there is ketone, uh, ketone is high, so there is ketoacidosis. So there is patient has got diabetic ketoacidosis. As well as there is renal failure. So there are multiple problems. Now what is the corrected uh, potassium? Corrected potassium is in this patient, for example, if the patient has got decay, we give fluid, we give insulin. Um, as we give the treatment, this pH gradually will go up. So from 6.82, it will go to 6.9, 7, 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, 7.4. We, which may take several hours to get, but the moment the patient develops pH of 7.4, this potassium will decrease. It will decrease from 7.3 to 7.1, maybe 6.3, 5.3, 4.3. Gradually, it will go down. For every 0.2 of pH going up, the potassium will go down one millimole per liter. So when I say corrected potassium, I mean, what will be the potassium when we get the pH of 7.4? So why it is important? It is important because if the potassium, if we can predict that the potassium will be low, then we need to add some extra potassium to that patient. Otherwise, the patient will develop hy severe hypokalemia and essentially will die. Similarly, if we can understand the corrected potassium will be high, then we can give some treatments like calcium gluconate or something. All right. Now, this is a, a very important concept. So let's uh, show some images so that uh, we can understand it well. Now, in this uh, section, we can see that on the left-hand side, we have got a normal cell. And on the outside, there's the extracellular environment. So when we do the blood test or blood gas, we take the blood from the extracellular environment. Intracellularly, the potassium is high. The concentration is about 150 millimole per liter. However, on the extracellular environment, the potassium is low. It is three to five millimole per liter. Say it is four millimole per liter on an average. In this physiological pH of 7.4, in this patient, the potassium is say four millimole per liter. On the cell membrane, there are various types of uh, carrier proteins. One of these is hydrogen potassium antiport. Its job is to carry the potassium and hydrogen in the opposite direction. So if the hydrogen ion comes out of the cell, potassium ion enters. If the hydrogen ion enters the cell, potassium ion comes out. So this is the normal physiological environment. Now let's see what happens in acidosis. Now, this is my patient where the pH was 6.8. And the potassium was quite high, 7.3. As you can see, there is a lot of hydrogen and also there is a lot of potassium in the extracellular environment. And when we do the blood gas, we are getting this result. Now, as we give treatment to the patient, like in my patient, this is a decay and also renal failure. As we give 
fluid, dextro uh, insulin. We are we can give um, if there is sepsis we can give antibiotics. If the patient has got renal failure we can give we can do dialysis. As we do that, this extracellular hydrogen ion they will just disappear. As you can see here, the hydrogen ion here is disappearing. Then there is another hydrogen ion which is disappearing, another hydrogen ion disappearing, and then there is another hydrogen ion disappearing. As the hydrogen ion disappears, the pH gradually increases. So pH was 6.8. Now the pH has increased to 7.0. Now there is a bit of electrical imbalance now. So there is less amount of hydrogen here. And there is relatively more hydrogen will be here. So what will happen is some hydrogen ion will come out and potassium ion will enter. And another hydrogen, hydrogen ion will come out, another potassium ion will enter. Another hydrogen ion will come out and another potassium ion will enter. The end result is we are losing uh, hydrogen from the extracellular environment. So the pH will go up, but also we are losing potassium from the Excessive environment because potassium ion is entering the cell. As we give um, some insulin, there will be different mechanism by which the potassium ion will enter the cell. If you give salbutamol in a patient, similar thing will happen. There will be a different mechanism by which the potassium ion will enter the cell. So this is the end result. In my patient, when we have given treatment with saline, insulin, antibiotics, after several hours, the pH uh, go, uh, went up to uh, 7.4. As the pH is 7.4, as you can see, the potassium is reduced to 4.3. And uh, that is the corrected potassium. So when I say corrected potassium, we meant the potassium, which we can predict when the pH is 7.4. So that is the, that is the main concept. Of the character potassium. It can happen in acidosis, it can happen in alkalosis, opposite way. So in alkalosis, the, normally the pH is high. As you give treatment in alkalosis, the pH will gradually decrease to 7.4, and in that case, the potassium will go up, which means that we need to uh, keep an eye so that the potassium does not go in a uh, very, very uh, hyperkalemic state, because that can be life-threatening. Why do we need this um, character potassium. We need character potassium so that we can predict what the potassium will be after giving treatment. And either we can give some extra potassium into the cell, or we can uh, do uh, the, uh, we can give some treatment of hyperkalemia, depending on what the predicted or character potassium is. So that is the main concept. Now let's do some calculations. All right. Potassium on the predicted potassium, which means the potassium at the pH of 7.3. Let's do some calculations in a different patient. So this is a young uh, girl, I think nine-year-old, we have seen in our uh, emergency department. It is a DKA patient. Uh, as you can see here, the pH is life-threateningly low. So severe acidemia with a pH of 6.88, with a bicarb of severely low, 3.6. And there is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis with an anion gap of 30.7. And let, let's concentrate on the potassium. We can do the whole ABG analysis in a different video. Now, the calculation is very simple. So we know that formula, measured potassium, which is 6.9, minus physiological pH 7.4, minus the pH in this patient, that is 6.88, divided by 0.2. Because we know that for every 0.2 pH increase, the um, potassium will decrease one millimole per liter. And in this particular patient, uh, the corrected potassium is 4.3. What does it mean? Should we give treatment with extra potassium in this patient? The answer is no. Do not add any potassium until and unless the measured potassium is below uh, 5.3, right? So that is that is we can predict we can uh, predict the potassium from the from this formula. Let's see another patient. So this is a different patient, it's an elderly patient with uh, COPD, and uh, she is coming with uh, severe respiratory distress. And even after giving 60% uh, oxygen, uh, we could not uh, control her, so we have to start on a bicarb. Now. In this patient, the pH is moderately low, so it is uh, 7.1. And uh, if we look at the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, 71, so patient has got type 2 respiratory failure with a normal anion gap, and the potassium is 4.4. Let's do the corrected potassium. We know the formula here, 
So collector potassium is measured potassium minus 7.4 minus pH, which is 7.1. So if we do this formula, the collector potassium is 2.9. What does it mean? It means before we give treatment of this patient with salbutamol with uh, NIV, even if we intubate this patient for ventilatory support, we know that this potassium will come down to uh, 2.9 the moment this pH increases from 7.1 to 7.4. So we need to add extra potassium to this patient even though the initial potassium is normal. So that is the main concept of corrected potassium. Please don't get confused between corrected potassium and um, expected potassium, which is a very confusing uh, concept, and I never do that expected potassium. So I always do corrected potassium, and that is the uh, main uh, uh, ideal thing to do. And I hope that you do the corrected potassium all the time when you see a blood gas. Well, it does not matter if there's acidosis or alkalosis. This formula will give you the correct result every time. All right. So these are some uh, little uh, references for you to go through. Uh, if you have any questions, this is a very Im important concept. Uh, I hope uh, you can understand, but still, if you have any further questions, please uh, drop me a line. I'll be very happy to answer. You can write a comment or you can uh, get, get in touch with, uh, with a Twitter or through email or through my website. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.